Hey, Mark. Hey, Mr. J. So I know doing all this merch marketing, like these three awesome death battle t-shirts, can get kind of stressful. So we added some new office amenities that I think will help take the edge off, like the new office jacuzzi. Gee, no thanks. You ever smelled a wet sloth before? All right, maybe a relaxing massage then. Me, mm, I got a fear of hands. All right, how about a nice hot sauna? It's a fucking toast oven, Chad. I'm Mark Slothman, and now I got the sexiest shirt in the market, Death Battle Shirts. You wear this, you're gonna find yourself in a sex battle. I don't know what that is, but I know you'll love it, okay? Now click the link below and buy this shirt, or they're gonna eat me. It's finally time for one of the biggest matchups in Death Battle history. Yeah, the giant robot fight of all giant robot fights. The Megazord, the heavy hitting mech commanded by five Power Rangers. And Voltron, the defender of the universe, piloted by five paladins. For this matchup, there will be no Dragon Zords, no Galaxy Garrisons, no Robot Brachiosaurus, and no mice. Just a good old 5v5 war of the giant robots. He's wears an arm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Since the dawn of time, good has battled the forces of evil. The vicious witch Rita Repulsa and her giant monsters waged war with the good-natured galactic sage Zordon. Their 2,000-year war finally ended when Rita zapped him into a time warp, but not before Zordon managed to lock her up in a... Space dumpster? Yes, apparently that thing is a space dumpster, or to put more accurately, a galactic recycling bin. Uh, however, Zordon knew it was only a matter of time before Rita escaped to conquer Earth once more. Good thing Zordon had thousands of years to come up with a foolproof plan. He could summon the five greatest warriors from around the galaxy to defend the planet. Or... Teleport to us five overbearing and over-emotional humans. No! Not that! Not teenagers! That plan is asinine, but somehow it worked. Zordon granted five teenagers the ability to draw power from a dimension called the Morphin Grid. This molecular transmutation turns them into superhumans with access to mighty mechanical beasts called Zords, becoming the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yep, this guy fights aliens with the power of dance, along with his Mastodon Zord. Although slow, this Zord can freeze blast enemies with ice, or saran wrap if you're short on budget. But when five giant mechanical beasts aren't enough to keep the villains down, these machines join together to... We're just the coolest friggin' thing you've ever seen in your life! Power it! Bring them together! This is the Megazord, a 333-foot colossus with enough power to effortlessly tear down buildings, sometimes unintentionally. All five rangers pilot the Megazord as one, combining their own martial arts skills to defeat giant monsters. It's like a giant rock'em suck'em robot with laser beams. He can fry enemies with its cranial laser, blast fireballs from its hands, shoot immobilizing beams from its eyes, and even use the Mastodon's face as a shield. 
And when it's time to send someone to an early grave, they summon their blade ex machina, the Power Sword. Little known fact, simply touching the Power Sword can recharge the Megazord if it's low on power. It's not just a battery. This giant sword is over 100 feet long and orbits the Earth when not in use. Plus, it can launch energy waves and cut down almost any monster with just one swing. And there's even more. It's a surprisingly versatile weapon, like with this feature they implemented against the Nasty Knights. Any energy we throw at him, he just reflects back at us. That's why our weapons are burned out. So what do we do about it? Reflect his energy back at him, along with a bit of our own. I don't get it. Apparently, the Power Sword can absorb oncoming kinetic energy and turn it against the attacker, drastically increasing the Megazord's striking power. Well, after pummeling monsters every weekday afternoon, the Power Rangers have been through almost everything. From fighting a world-destroying dragon to a giant walking pumpkin who raps? Ooh, you Rangers make me mad! Wake me up with a rap that bad! They've even fought Kimberly's purse. Man, these villains were getting desperate. And so were the writers. Anyway, the Megazord is strong enough to lift and throw the 170 ton Dragon Zord into a mountain with little effort. So long, Gay Bowser! Even the individual Zords can support the weight of whole monsters on their own. While many of these monsters should weigh similar to the Megazord, some certainly weigh even more. In fact, in a general scale, when you double the size of an object, its weight increases by a factor of 8. Comparing these organic monsters to human beings means some of them could weigh as much as 10,000 tons. And the Megazord even gut-punched one of them over 100 feet into the air. Assuming that monster is 10,000 tons, lifting it 133 feet would require about 90 million newtons of force. 50 times as much force as a space shuttle's launching thrust. With that kind of strength, I bet you could backhand a person into outer space. That's oddly specific. Strange, wasn't it? Regardless, they've used that strength to take down countless monsters capable of wiping out all life on Earth. They even went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cyclopsis, a warzord designed to conquer entire worlds. But even for the Power Rangers, defending the Earth is no small job. When they least expect it, the Megazord's energy supply can be quickly exhausted in the middle of combat. And it doesn't help that half the reason is because they just get hit so damn much. Despite the Megazord's awesome power, it's really lacking in the whole maneuverability department. I mean, come on! It can at least try to avoid an attack. But when the enemy hits hard, the Power Rangers hit back even harder. With the fate of the world lying in their hands, no one can ever take them down. Bring him down! From days of long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. In less cryptic terms, 1200 years ago, the evil Drool Empire nearly conquered the entire known universe. But not everybody was cool with fleets of ships shooting up their planets, so a team of scientists and magic priests decided to fight back. Through the marriage of magic and technology, they forged a 300-foot-tall living automaton so powerful that it single-handedly pushed back the Empire's onslaught. Before long, the whole universe had heard of the mechanical knight known as Voltron. Pissed that he was losing everything because of some space robot, the Empire's King Zarkon ordered a space witch to kill Voltron with a magic space spell. And it kind of worked? Instead of being destroyed, Voltron was split up into five very merchandisable robot lions. Divided and stripped of its sentience, the universe's best hope had fallen. Until five space explorers crash-landed on Eris, the exact same planet the lions just so happened to be hiding on. Destiny or some crap led them to the castle where the Princess Allura gave them a life-changing opportunity. Pilot the long-lost lions and go around saving the universe for a living. Keith Cogain is the head of the Lion Force in more ways than one. As leader of the team, he commands his cohorts, and he pilots the Black Lion, the literal head of Voltron. Lance McClain is the Han Solo of the group. This hot-headed show-off controls the Red Lion, which forms Voltron's right arm. Soyoshi Garrett, better known as Hunk, is the muscle of the team. He pilots the Yellow Lion, which forms Voltron's left leg. 
The Blue Lion is piloted by Sven Holgerson. <laughs> oh, he did. <laughs> the Blue Lion is piloted by Princess Alora herself, taking over after the original pilot got a bad case of stabbing. Her lion forms Voltron's right leg. Last up is Daryl Stoker. You can call him Pidge. Pidge pilots the Green Lion, Voltron's left arm. And he's also, well, a little unhinged. Pidge, get rid of that grenade! At least his outfit matches his lion's colors. I mean, damn, it's not that hard, people. And when all five lions combine, Voltron lives again. Activate Mega Thrusters! Voltron! Voltron! Form feet and legs! Form arms and body! And I'll form the head! You wish you ever think about how the pilots stay in the heads of the lions when they're fighting? That has to be, like, ridiculously nauseating. Oh, undoubtedly. That's probably why they usually travel by flight and prefer long-range combat over hand-to-hand. -hand. Speaking of which, Voltron got busy fighting Zarkon's giant row beasts and saving the universe with a huge assortment of weapons. Voltron can shoot Stingray missiles and even pillars of flame out of its hands and feet, or blast the lion heads off like rockets. It can stun enemies with ion dart lasers from its head, or use the Electro Force cross attack from its chest. On Keith's command, the Lion Force can manifest Voltron's most powerful weapons out of thin air. Everything from spinning laser blades to javelins to nunchucks. But the real showstopper is the almighty Blazing Sword. Form Blazing Sword! With this blade, Voltron can slice through most Robies like Jello and dish out the Starfire attack, which splits Robies apart and also makes a friggin' tornado for good measure. The Blazing Sword can also conduct electricity to recharge Voltron itself. Why are all these swords also batteries? The Blazing Sword is enormously powerful, capable of destroying a satellite hundreds of times larger than Voltron. Voltron himself is powerful enough to melt meteors, kick giant machines sky high, and tank explosions the size of countries. The Voltron Lions have even traveled between galaxies in less than a day, making them several times faster than the speed of light. Voltron has also survived landing on the Omega Comet, which is so dense it possesses the gravitational force of a black hole. Okay, that all sounds insane, but even giant robot man lions have their limits. Like getting ganged up on by multiple row beasts at once, or getting stabbed and sliced open. But black like hole levels of gravity? <laughs> That's a gigwag, right? Voltron may be strong, but it lacks the finesse and skill of one trained in martial arts. Voltron also carries a shocking design flaw. If the release plates on its joints are struck in combat, it could jettison an entire limb from the core body. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that if I kick Voltron, freaking Voltron, in the shins hard enough, he'll just lose a leg and it'll just pop right off? Essentially, yes, though it has only happened in training. Even so, whether the Lion Force is up against a technical issue or a colossal robeast, the universe can always depend on Voltron. All right, the combatants are set. Let's send this debate once and for all. But first, all this talk of robots is making me hungry. So let's let, let's fix that. Now, I'm a man who likes a good home-cooked meal, but going out to buy or hunt my own food is a hassle. If only there was some way food could be brought straight to me. Good news, Boomstick. Introducing Blue Apron, the number one fresh food delivery service in the country. Using only the freshest ingredients, Blue Apron delivers a kit of ready-to-cook meals straight to your door, along with easy-to-follow instructions. Plus, the ingredients are perfectly proportioned, so it cuts down on waste and you know you're using the right amount. On top of that, you can log into their website and select the upcoming meals that sound good to you, like the spinach fresh mozzarella pizza with olives. Plus, it does feel rewarding cooking new and exciting meals right in your own home. But don't just take our word for it. We want you to try it. Because you're watching Death Battle, you can get three meals free with free shipping by heading to blueapron.com forward slash battle. Seriously, you will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com forward slash battle.
But right now, it's time for our death battle! Scanners on, team! Seems the prehistoric activity originates here! Finally! If I don't see a dinosaur today, I'm blaming you. Quiet, Les. I'm picking up something. Power Rangers! Rangers! Hello! We need dinosaur power now! Hark! What's happening? I think I found the dinosaurs. All right, Rangers! Plug off! Zack here! This is kicking. This is Billy! All systems go! Training reporting! Ready to rock! I love this part! Let's tame these kids! For Voltron! For feet and legs! Form arms and body! And I'll form the head! good reason why Voltron is the defender of the universe. While the Megazord boasted excellent abilities in hand-to-hand -hand and sword combat, Voltron couldn't go down so easily. Voltron's huge arsenal put it ahead, especially in long range. Even when the Megazord could get in close, it couldn't keep up with Voltron's blazing speed. I mean, Voltron travels between galaxies in a matter of hours, and it can fly. 
The Megazord once punched a monster weighing at most 10,000 tons 133 feet into the air. In contrast, Voltron kicked a 3,900 ton mutated bulldozer nearly 1,900 feet up. Despite Voltron's monster weighing less than the Megazords, this is still a more impressive feat. Comparing weight and distance traveled for both feats, Voltron's requires at least five and a half times more strength. Plus, Voltron clearly had the superior durability, especially with that black hole comet feat. The Omega Comet's pull could destroy entire planets within 62 miles of itself, which means the comet could output forces of over 13 sextillion newtons. The Megazord couldn't survive anything close to that level of power. We can prove it. Later in Power Rangers history, they upgraded their mech to the Thunder Megazord, which is specifically stated to be more powerful than the original Megazord in every way. The new Zords will serve you well. Once mastered, your Zords will reveal even greater powers. When this new Megazord fought against a giant Zord called Serpentera, which at full power could destroy planets, a single blast from it easily tore the Thunder Megazord apart. And that blast didn't even use half of Serpentera's power. Voltron outclassed the Megazord in almost every way that counted, including strength, speed, and durability. Trust me. I'm not lying. The winner is Voltron. Don't go away, we're about to reveal who's fighting in the next episode. And if you want to see behind the scenes commentary on this episode, then just click that box and start a 30 day free trial for a first membership. Thanks guys.